Hello everyone. While tenancy keeps coming up every couple of weeks and it seems that there is a tremendous amount of confusion around it. And in my opinion, this is mainly because there are hundreds of definitions to multi-tenancy out there. In this video, I'm going to give it a definition and I'm going to show you how to achieve multi-tenancy in a Laravel application without any packages. In my opinion, the most common characteristic of a multi-tenant application is that it needs two pieces of information to run. So in a typical application, you only need to know who the logged in user is. In a multi-tenant application, you need to know the logged in user as well as the tenant using the application. So for example, let's take laracasts.com. You log into laracasts.com and the Laravel application running laracasts.com knows that you are the logged in user and that's the only piece of information that it needs. However, imagine that the platform running laracasts.com is also serving viewcasts.com and uh, livewirecasts.com and so on. To be able to run this system, you need to tell it who the user is as well as who is the tenant. And each tenant has its own user base. So laracasts.com has its own users and viewcasts.com has its own users. And to achieve this, there are two common ways. First, to add a tenant ID to all your resources and make sure you query the correct tenant ID each time. And the second way is to create a database for each tenant and switch to the correct database before running the application. The first approach is the most common one and I personally recommend that you go for it as long as you don't have to use the uh, database per tenant approach. If you have to use the database per tenant approach, however, this video I'm going to show you how to do it in a Laravel application. We are going to start with the database.php configuration file. We are going to remove all the connections except the MySQL connection. Next, we'll rename this connection to tenant and set it as the default connection. We will also create another connection and call it landlord. And this is going to be the connection for the administrator or where we are going to keep information about all tenants and the shared resources between them. In this connection, all the environment variables start with landlord underscore. And finally, we are going to set the database in the tenant connection to null because we are going to set it from our code based on the configuration of each tenant. Now in the configuration file, we have the landlord configurations and the main database connection configurations. In the landlord configurations, we set the database to be called landlord. And I have this database already created in my local machine. Next, we'll take a look at the migrations. And here we have the tenant migrations in the root of the migrations directory created by Laravel. These are just the default migrations that will run on the tenant connection. I also created a different directory for the landlord related migrations. And currently I only have one migration to create the tenants table. Each tenant is going to have a name, a domain and a database. I'll explain why in a second why we have the tenant migrations in a separate directory. For now, let's take a look at the seeders. In the database seeder class, I created a seeder for the landlord connection. In this seeder, we just create two tenants, one called Laravel and the other called Baravel. If we take a look at the tenant model, we have the connection set to be the landlord connection, while tenant related models like the user model is going to use the default connection, which is the tenant connection. Now let's see how we can run the migrations for the landlord connection. We are going to call PHP artisan migrate, and we are going to use the landlord database connection. We will also set a pass for the migration command. When running this command, we are telling Laravel to run the migrations in the database migrations landlord directory on the landlord database connection. So let's run this command and take a look at our database. And we can see that the migrations table was created and it has the landlord tenant table migration and the tenant table was created as well. Now let's try to run the migrate fresh artisan command on the landlord connection and provide the seed option to seed our database. Now, if we take a look at the database, we can see the two test tenants. So now we know how to migrate our landlord connection. What about the tenant connection? What we need to be able to do is to run all the migrations, all the tenant migrations for each and every single tenant we have. 
And for that, we cannot run PHP arts and migrate simply. We need to write our own console command that's going to run PHP arts and migrate for each tenant. I've already created this command under app console commands tenants migrate command. Calling PHP arts and tenants migrate, you can provide an optional tenant to run the migration for this specific tenant, or you can leave it by default and it's going to run the migrations on all tenants. You can use the fresh option to run PHP arts and migrate fresh instead of PHP arts and migrate. And you can also provide the seed option to seed the database for you. In the handle method of the command, we check if we have a tenant argument provided. So we run the migration on this tenant only. If not, we loop over all tenants in the system and run the migration. In the migrate method and before we can run PHP arts and migrate or PHP arts and migrate fresh on the tenant, we need to configure the tenant and use it. And by use it, I mean telling our application that this is the current tenant. So let's take a look at our tenant model and see how we can achieve this. I have added two methods, one called configure and the other called use. The configure method is going to set the configuration for the tenant database connection and set the database attribute to the database of our tenant. After that, it's going to purge the tenant connection and reconnect it and same on the schema connection. And we're doing this to make sure that if another tenant was already connected, the connection will be reset before connecting to the new tenant. And in the use method, we are setting a container alias called tenant and we are assigning the current tenant to it. Now, each time we resolve tenant from the container, we are going to get this tenant model. Now, if we call our artisan command tenants migrate, it's going to run the migrations on each tenant in our database. We can also provide a fresh option to run PHP arts and migrate fresh on each tenant. Now let's see how we can seed our tenant databases. Here I have the landlord seeder and the user seeder. In our database seeder, we need to find a way to tell Laravel to only migrate or to only seed the landlord seeder if we are not calling our artisan uh, migrate tenants command. We are going to use the server global variable to check if the command being run is the tenants migrate command, which is the command we just created. And if so, we're not going to run the landlord seeder because if you are running tenants migrate, that means we need to migrate or we need to seed the tenants connection. Now, if we run the tenants migrate command and provide the seed option, it's going to run the migrations and seed our tenant databases. Now let's take a look on how we can run tests in such setup. Typically, you would use the refresh database trait to refresh the database between each test. But here we have two database connections and we need to refresh both connections before each test. So instead of using the trait, we are going to configure our own way. Using the setup method in our tests, we can configure the landlord and the tenant database connections to use SQLite instead of MySQL and use the in-memory database. We are also going to call the migrate command on the landlord connection and on the tenant connection. And in our test case here, we don't need to call our tenants migrate console command because in our tests, we assume that we already have a single tenant that we are testing against. In other tests, you might need to test against having multiple tenants. And in that case, you can run the tenants migrate command. Now that we configured the database connections in our tests manually, we can remove this from PHP unit.xml file. And if we run our tests, they are going to pass. If we take a look at the tests that just run, here we are creating a tenant and calling the use method to tell Laravel that this is the current tenant. And we are going to create four users on that tenant. We'll call the user's endpoint and assert that we get four users in return as well as the current tenant information. In our user's endpoint, we are simply returning the current tenant by resolving it from the container and all the users in the system in this current tenant. And now that we have migrations, seeding and tests working, let's see how we can configure our application to use the correct tenant.
I've created a service provider called tenancy provider and registered it in the app.php configuration file. Inside this tenancy provider, inside the put method, I call two methods, configure requests and configure queue. In configure requests, we are getting the current host or the domain and use that domain to query the tenant eloquent model, find the tenant, configure it and use it as the current tenant. So now if the request is coming from laravel.web, which is the domain of our Laravel tenant, the application is going to get the Laravel tenant and configure it and set it as the current tenant for the rest of the request. As for the queues, we are going to use the create payload using method and provide a closure. And in this closure, we are getting the tenant, the current tenant from the container. And we are going to set a tenant ID attribute in the job payload and store the current tenant ID in it. Now on each and every single queue job, the tenant ID attribute will be added to the payload. And that includes queued mail and queued notifications as well. We later on listen to the job processing event, get the tenant ID from the payload and use the tenant model to find the tenant, configure it and use it at the current tenant. So now every request knows which tenant to use and every queue job knows which tenant to use. As for console commands, you need to do the same as we did with the tenants migrate command. Provide a way to run the command against one tenant or loop over all the tenants and run the business logic on each of them. Now that I showed you one way of achieving the database per tenant approach, I must say that there are multiple packages out there, great packages that provide different approaches that you can use if this approach is not working for you. Also, Tom Schlick gave a good talk about multi-tenancy in Laracon US 2017 that I highly recommend. I will leave a link to the packages as well as Tom's talk in the description down below. I hope you found this video useful and if you have any questions regarding multi-tenancy, Please leave them in the comments down below and I'll do my best to answer all the questions. Thank you and have a great day.